Thanks. We're joined by <clears throat> NJIT. First off, uh, first year head coach, uh, Grant Pillmeyer, uh, student athlete, uh, Elijah Buchanan. Uh, guys, thanks for joining us. Grant, we'll start with just an opening statement from you. Um, you know, first year taking over the program, your first thoughts as you start a practice and get ready for your first season as head coach. Uh, I think you're on mute, coach. Well, my, my first year has been extremely exciting. We, we've had, you know, a lot of people come through our gym. I encourage a lot of people to come watch practice from NBA uh, executives, you know, some of the top high school coaches in the area, alumni, and everyone just has been blown away with the energy and the passion that our kids have played with, and, uh, how hard they worked every single day. Uh, and that's just kind of been a common theme. You know, people are excited to come watch us play because our kids play so extremely hard and they play the tremendous, tremendous, tremendous amount of passion on both ends of the court. Elijah, your uh, first season coming over to transfer, first season with Coach, what are your first impressions of the program and what are you most excited about heading into the season? Um, I love the energy and the passion the team brings and especially the coaches. Even like when they want to show us the, how, how to hustle, they dive in on the ball and stuff like that. They're just bringing a whole bunch of energy. And I feel like our team is going to win a lot because, like, we play hard. We play hard, and we just bring a whole bunch of energy to the gym. Jaden? Hey, Grant, how are you? Jaden, what's going on, man? Nothing much. I'm looking forward to uh, coming out next week for the Seton Hall game. And oh, my yeah, first yeah. question, And yeah, my first question to you is this. What attracted you to this program with – everything that it has to offer the resources at this level and also to follow up having spent so much time around Kevin and the way he prepares his assistants, what prepared you most for this opportunity? Well, I think, you know, when you first walk into, you know, walk into the arena, the the arena, I had never been to NJIT. I had never been on campus until I went up there for my interview and I heard the arena was nice, but then when you get up there, you see it and you're like, man, like this is incredible. Um, and then you see the practice facilities in the weight room and the training room and the locker room and the film room. It's like, man, we, we have everything we have here. And then, you know, Elijah can attest to this, you know, the apartments that the players live in, you know, I thought, well, we had it at the university of Maryland, you wouldn't get anything as good as that, but this is on the same level as that. Um, and then all the talent in the, you know, the 60 mile radius from Philadelphia, obviously New Jersey, New York city, Long Island, you know, there's so much good talent. Um, I kind of want to do things differently where everyone's just trying to go in the portal. Um, I'm going to be very selective with who I, who I go after in the transfer market, but you know, I want to do this thing with mostly local high school kids. And I feel like there's so much good talent in the area that we could build this program into a, a winning program year in and year out. And EB, my question for you is this, your relationship with Rashawn stores, who's on staff with coach now, uh, how much of a factor was that in getting you and Daniel to come to NJIT? Um, when you know he didn't get the job at Manhattan, unfortunately, I told him wherever he goes, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna ride with him to to, to the end time. So that's that's basically it. How much has he meant to you and and your development over the last five years? He's like he's really like my big brother. Basically, he taught me a lot. He taught me how to just like keep my head up. Whenever I'm down, because I, I, I'm always hard on myself. He's always the one to come and pick me up. So I'm just going to stick with him forever. Go with Matt. All right. Uh, question for you, EB. You, uh, you joined a team that has nine freshmen. You know, you've got a lot of experience. You've, you've played now college basketball for half a decade. What type of leadership role and how do you see this team gelling, considering that there's so many new parts? Um, the new parts, honestly, they don't even feel like freshmen because they the way they bring their intensity in practice every day, they don't back down to nobody. So I don't think leading them will be very hard, honestly. So I, uh, that's what I really think. John? Good morning, Coach. Sean Titel from HD.com. Uh Question about scheduling. Um, you have a couple of big road trips this year to Miami and Wake. I was curious, since you have so many connections in the industry, uh, who are we most likely to see in the future on your schedule? Is it Seton Hall, your alma mater, or Maryland because of your work with Kevin, or Villanova because of your teammates, Mike Nardi, or somebody else? 
No, that's a good question. So the uh, the Miami and Wake Forest game was already done prior to me getting the job. Um, but it's funny you say that because I, I was just texting Mike Nardi earlier and I said, hey, man, are we, we going to play this game? Um, so he said he's going to get back to me. Um, and then, I, you know, I, I think it's I think it's a cool thing to try to mix it up with where we play at. You know, obviously Seton Hall is right around the road. So we'd love to get them on the schedule. And, uh, you know, Coach Pikel has a great program on Rutgers. Would love an opportunity, you know, for my kids to get a chance to experience playing against Coach Patino. Obviously, you know, I've known Coach Hurley um, going back to when I was in high school at playing at St. Patrick's. He was the head coach of St. Benedict's. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how I feel about playing Coach Well. That's kind of like family to me. So, um, you know, you obviously it, it, it's, it's, it would be great before the game, great after the game. When you're looking down there and you're playing against someone who's been a mentor of yours, for you know, thirteen years, uh, it would be. I, I don't know. I, I haven't really wrapped my mind around that one. Matt, you have another one. Yeah, for for coach. Uh, obviously, I've been around this program for a, a long time, and I look at these stats now more like specific to the team in this year. You lose fifty percent of your scoring. You bring in a bunch of guys, a bunch of freshmen. Who are we seeing that are guys that can emerge, maybe returners or newcomers? Obviously, you have a lot relying, I'm sure, on um, on EB. But talk a little bit about what you're seeing in practice as the guys that might emerge early on as as, as key guys in terms of scoring points and, and and being guys that we'll focus on on the, on the broadcasts. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I'll, I'll start with Elijah because he's on here now. But, you know, he, he's going to be used, you know, his usage rate is going to be one of the highest in the country. You know, he, he's going to be in everything. You know, one possession you're going to see him in a pick and roll, um, and then another possession you're going to see him in a post up, and then another time you're going to see him coming off a baseline runner. Another time you're going to see him in an isolation play. The thing that I loved about Elijah when I watched him on film, um, he he can be played in so many different ways, and you know teams are going to have a hard time figuring out who to put on him because you know most of the time he's going to be used like a guard, and he's going to be in a lot a, a ton of pick and rolls. But, you know, if teams decide they want to put a true guard on him, a 6'2", 6'3", then we're going to throw Elijah in the post and, you know, let him facilitate offense kind of, you know, similar to how Coach Wright did it at Villanova when he had Jalen Brunson and, you know, he, he was a bigger guard. Um, so I, I think Elijah is going to have a tremendous year and he's only getting better. Obviously, he's coming off an injury, but I think you're going to see the best of him come January, February, where, you know, I, I, I think he, he'll be an all-league player and then, I've been extremely press, impressed with Makai Gray, um, you know, tremendous athlete. You know, I'm using him in a very similar way to how we used Desi Rodriguez when I was at Seton Hall. And, you know, being being a big athletic lefty 6'6 six, six wing, um, using him in a very similar role. I, I love Adam Hess's competitiveness. I, I feel like he's a knockdown shooter. He had a he had a minor procedure done in August, which, you know, kept him sidelined for almost two months. So he he's still not back to 100 percent, but he's got a great ability to shoot the basketball. Um, and then Kel DeGraff, you know, he uh, he he's very skilled and, and I'm going to use him a lot on the perimeter. We're, we're doing a ton of NBA five out action, um, you know, that was very popular in the Big Ten. Obviously, we did it at Maryland. Um, Ohio State did a ton of it. Illinois did a ton of it with the kid Coleman Hawkins. So we just started incorporating that. We, this that's um, the five out offense this past week because I love Kel's ability to shoot the basketball and I love his ability to pass the basketball. Um, and then I have some really talented freshmen. Unfortunately, I got nine of them, so I can't single every one of them out. Um, but you know, I I have three of guys that I expect to play. You know, play play a lot of minutes for us and. Um, you know, there's going to be times they're going to look like freshmen early on. But by the time, you know, we get to February, I think those guys will be very comfortable. And uh, I'm going to ride with the three of those guys all year long. As just as a follow up, has anybody emerged as the, the point guard that you're going to throw out there from day one? Or is that still very much in the mix? Or in, in no, I, it's kind of like, you know, a Big Ten quarterback decision where, you know, I, I brought in um, a bunch of young guards and, you know, they're, they're all battling and out right now. Um I have an idea who's going to start for us in our scrimmage this weekend coming up. But, um, you know, if another guy comes and has an unbelievable practice the next two days, then they're going to be my starting point guard. Um, but I, I feel very confident in my guard position, even though they're young. Um, you know, the kid, Sebastian Robinson, played at a great high school, Roselle Catholic, made a game-winning shot last year in the high school national championship game uh, semis in D.C. Another kid, Tariq Francis, he's actually the nephew of Brandon Knight 
and has, you know, spent a lot of time in the last you know year or two living with Brandon and spent a lot of time at Rutgers and getting mentored by Brandon. Um, so I, I, I feel very confident in, in, in my young guards ability to be playmakers and um, to, to give them the ball and, and trust in them. <clears throat> time for one more. Jaden, do you have another one? I do. Grant, just following up, you said you just implemented the five-out offense. How much different will you play compared to the way Kevin played at Seton Hall, Maryland? Will we see more of a defense-oriented group? Do you want to play up tempo? What What do you have in mind with this group year one? Yeah, but very similar to how we played at Maryland, to be honest with you, Jaden. Um, you know, we we just started – you know, it, you know, you talked about Rashawn Storrs, and he he's been so valuable to me just because you know he comes from you know playing and learning under Steve Masiello. I came from spending twelve years with Kevin Willard, and obviously they both uh, were assistants and came up in the business under Rick Pitino. So a lot of our terminology, a lot of our defensive principles are already the same. So while you know I have sixteen you know new players that have never played for me. It's extremely valuable to me to have a coach on my staff that understands what I want day in and day out. And when we be in a practice, I tell Sean, hey, you run this drill, you run this drill, you run this drill. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that we did in Maryland, there was a lot of stuff that they did in Manhattan. So now I don't have to be involved in explaining every drill. So I've been extremely fortunate to have Rashawn, uh, how long will I be able to have him? I don't know. You know, he thinks like a head coach. I told him every day you come to practice, I want you still acting like a head coach. Don't go back to thinking like an assistant. I said, one of the reasons why I hired you is because you've been in that seat before. Um, and he's been invaluable to me and my staff and obviously all the players. But uh, very similar. Uh, obviously, we're going to do some tweaks, but our defense is identical. Our way we play pick and rolls is identical. Um, you know, we started doing some five out last year because Julian Reese was very comfortable catching and making reads. And, you know, we're, we're going to do a lot of the same stuff with Kel. And then, you know, the one thing Coach Willard always did, he always put his players in the best position for them to be successful. It was never, hey, this is my offense and you got to get adjusted to my offense. It was more, you know, I got these guys and this is what their strengths are. And, you know, staying up late at night, figuring out what offense will work best for them. So, it's, uh, you know, my my program and, and the way Coach Willer run the program, it'll probably be ran by 97% the same. Thanks, Fran. See you soon. Thank you, Coach and Elijah. Uh, best of luck uh, as you start the season. Right. Thank you a ton. I appreciate you guys having us on and look forward to seeing you guys at some games this year.